In what I'd call one of the highlights of E3 this year, Razer announced that they have now switched over and finally brought in AMD Ryzen processors. I can't tell you how many times I've actually refreshed Razer's page hoping that they would adopt Ryzen. So it's awesome to hear. I know there were some rumors about this back in, I think, March. So really cool to see. Well, I got one of these. It just showed up today. This is the 3080 uh, AMD Ryzen uh, 5900HX. Yes, HX. It's not the HS as you see in most of the laptops, especially one of this size. As you can see, this is tiny. Look at this cute little thing. 14 inches on this guy. Um, so we're going to test this out. We're going to try this out, see how it does. It is a 3080. I think it's comes in at 100 watts. Uh, I think it's 80 to 100, but uh, we'll see how that goes um, and really how this holds up. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm really optimistic that Razer has done it. Uh, I know that this is a compact package to have a, a 3080 in a 14-inch laptop like this. Um, yeah, we'll see. Let's give it a test. All right, I just wanted to start off by saying that no one is paying for this review. This is just something I'm choosing to do of my own free will. I actually ordered this. I wanted to test it out and hope that it destroys my current laptop. Now, I got the uh, Razer Blade 14 with the uh, QHD monitor. All of them come with the 5900HX. This is the 3080 that's at 80 to 100 watts, and all of them are 16 gigs of RAM, which is a little unfortunate. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing. For starters, I will say the packaging is pretty cool, if not confusing. Um, it comes in a box in a box. This one says Ryzen on it, but then hang on, there's another one. Right, okay, so we've got another box here. Here's our power supply. Uh, there we go, there's a the laptop. Inside is also an instruction manual and a cleaning cloth, which you will absolutely need because this thing is a fingerprint magnet. Inside of the box is also a pretty cool message about green waste and packaging that they use and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Kudos for a good a job well done on that. This laptop only comes in one color, black, and is a CNC aluminum frame with an anodized finish. On the top of the laptop, you have the Razer logo. Yes, this does glow. It will illuminate once the laptop is running. On the left side of the laptop, you have your power port, a type A USB, a type C USB display port, and a headphone jack. On the right side, you have a type C USB, a type A USB, an HDMI 2.1 out, and a lock. On the bottom of the laptop are several rubber feet, Two fans that each have ADA blades pulling cold air into the vapor chamber, blowing the hot air out, out the back. Now, I'm not going to actually open this laptop up because there's not much to see, because you can see in that picture just now. Now, let's look at some measurements. This laptop is 12 and a half inches or 317 millimeters wide, 8.5 inches or 216 millimeters long. And when you open the laptop up, it gets right to 9 inches, or 228.5 millimeters. The width of the laptop at both front and back is very small, at 0.66 inches, or 16.8 millimeters. The weight comes in at 3 pounds, 14 ounces, or 1.76 kilograms. When you add the power supply to it, that weight changes to 5 pounds, 9 ounces, or 2.52 kilograms. Very easy to take this traveling with you. The power supply that comes with it is a 230 watt power supply, and I think it's as small as I could possibly make it. The keyboard sounds like this. When pressing on the frame, you can see that it's actually a pretty solid frame. The keys are a little mushy when I press them. Since this is Razer, they are great at lighting up their keys and giving you a full customization of all of the keys you have. However, I found this flaw in my keys and it's really unacceptable. There's some letters that are missing half of the light. So like enter and caps here are only half illuminated. That's not a bug in my image. That's actually what it looks like. Now looking at the speakers, these are top facing speakers. They actually sound okay. There's a THX logo on the outside of the laptop. That has nothing to do with these speakers. It actually has to do with when you play audio through a surround sound headset. I have not had a chance to try this, but I definitely will. This is recorded on the onboard webcam, integrated video and the integrated microphone. Now let's take a look at the video card. This is an RTX 3080 that comes with a maximum power of 100 watts. It is the 8GB version, but it does have the full 6144 CUDA cores. Now, first thing I did was change it to a dedicated video for just the NVIDIA processor. I saw a good performance increase by doing this. The next thing I did was I went into the Synapse tool and I upgraded everything to the GPU at high and the CPU at high. All tests you see today are done under this exact setup. Let's take a look at benchmarks. Going into Geekbench 5, we have a 1464 single core and a 7242 multi-core. 
The CUDA score was massive at 133k. This is where things get fuzzy. Unigen had this at only 108 FPS with a score of only 2700. However, when I used an external display, the FPS end score got drastically higher. This is a TimeSpy benchmark. The first results I got from this were extremely disappointing and they were sub 10,000 for the graphics score. Here's a look at the CPU and GPU temperature peaks. I then tried using an external display to see if the results would match that of Unigen. They absolutely did. The results came in just over 10,000, but still it was an increase. And temperatures were also lower. Running Firestrike benchmarks through the laptop display had similar results to TimeSpy. A 22,000 graphics score seemed pretty low to me. Here's a look at the CPU and GPU temperatures for this benchmark coming in just under 100 degrees Celsius. Running Firestrike through an external monitor had about a 10% bump in graphics score, way better. The CPU and GPU both also came in cooler. Now let's look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is using the in-game benchmarking tool that Tomb Raider has. At 1440 FPS, it seemed a bit disappointing for how a 3080 should be performing. But even with that said, it still looked great with the average FPS sitting around 80 on the highest settings, all the way up to 125 on the lowest. I then changed the computer's resolution from 1440 to 1080 to see if that would make a difference. It made a drastic difference. With FPS shooting from about 110 at the highest setting, all the way up to about 225, 250 at the lowest. And you can see the lowest setting nearly hitting 400 FPS. Here's a comparison of how 1080 and 1440 performed. The next test was a Gears of War 5 benchmark. For this test, ultra settings were enabled by default. It resulted in an average GPU frame rate of 84.4. I then tested Gears of War with an external display. Like the previous test, all settings were defaulted to Ultra. Only this showed a pretty decent bump in FPS. Now let's talk about heat. Over the last day or two while I've been playing on this laptop, I've noticed some heat coming from so I throw a heat gun over it to test the temperatures. Looking directly above the keyboard, I was about 114 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. The screen, of course, came in much cooler, but then back to that section, you'd see it popping up. The keyboard also was hot. Then I tested the air underneath the laptop and it came in at 120 Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. Hey Google, what temperature burns skin? Eh, uh, okay. Though these heat checks seem like they came in pretty hot, uh, don't worry too much about it. This is pretty normal for most laptops. I just wouldn't expect this on a small laptop made for traveling. I also ran tests on these with an external display and they were way colder. Okay, so first thoughts. What do I think? Yes, this is a good laptop. It is impressive how powerful this 14 inch laptop is. Uh, that being said, I'm probably going to be alone in this, but I'm actually a little disappointed. Um, I, the fact that this 3080 is performing under most of the 3070s from just a 15-inch laptop, um, I don't know. I don't know why I'm expecting more from it. It is only 80 to 100 watts, but still, um, it can pack a punch, it can play games, and it does a decent job. But these initial benchmarks just seem really, really low. And at first I thought I was pulling something wrong, and so I kept trying to do them over and over again, but I get the same results. Now I say that, and actually looking at Tomb Raider, this game looks beautiful on this laptop. And it's a shame because this is in 1440, which as we saw, doesn't perform as well as the 1080. So if you're gonna play this mobile, you're probably gonna wanna turn on 1080, which defeats the purpose of this really good monitor. Going back to the keyboard, I just really didn't like it. And for a company that masters LED keys, to have a half illuminated key, multiple keys is really just unacceptable. 
Um, I do love the size. This is pretty cool. I think for anyone that's looking for this size of a laptop, who wants a 14 inch, you don't want to jump to that 15. This is the beast. I mean, you can't beat this one. Um, but if you're looking for a laptop that's just compact and you can take with you that you want to be able to plug into another monitor, which I think is where this actually kind of excels is, is the external output. I would just get a 15 inch. That's just me. Uh, there's so many cheaper thousand dollars cheaper, uh, uh, 15 inch 3070s out there to choose from. It's like a suite of good mid grade, uh, gaming laptops right now. Another takeaway of course, um, is that this is hot thing like all gaming laptops are hot there's none that are not but sitting on your lap which is what a 14 inch laptop is designed for you're melting your thighs um, and I, I know there's no real way around that um, I think I was just hoping that that evaporation chamber would do a little bit better um, vapor chamber that's what it's called vapor chamber not evaporation um, this isn't science class so thank you for coming to my first look uh, if you have any other thoughts uh, let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching and take care I do have a few more strictly gaming related videos coming soon, so I will get those uploaded pretty soon. I also have a 3070 on its way, so I'm excited to try that and compare it directly to this 38. Stay tuned.